thank you for attending uh, today. And uh, this is the third uh, lecture presentation of the BCS uh, University of Hertfordshire series for this 2012-2013. Uh, Welcome to one of the University of Hertfordshire senior lecturers, uh, Haira Husseini, a senior lecturer in the business school. And uh, we were actually delighted that uh, he's able to come and visit us for the second time, two years in a row. Uh, you did come to Steria to do a presentation last year, which went down extremely well. So we thought it was only appropriate that we invited Haira back to uh, do a presentation uh, this evening. Over to you. Thank you. Oh, thank you very much indeed. Good evening, everyone. Uh, just before I start, how many of you have got mobile phones? Can I see your hands? What an obvious question. <laughs> but I think the more interesting bit is when we start and look into the fact of what types of mobile devices you've got. Now, how many of you got smartphones that are somehow connected to 3G? Oh, most of you. Excellent. Okay, now, um, that's not your ringtone. <laughs> but anyway, what I want to talk to you about today, really some of these key things. I like to look at the mobile trends, what's happening with the mobile e-commerce and how that is changing uh, the way we engage with customers, the way we sell the way we support customers and all of that but also then we will move and talk about some of the challenges that we are facing now in the mobile commerce and there are lots of them um, but we're just going to pick up on some of the key ones then after that we'll be looking at opportunities that m commerce bring to the businesses across uh, across the world but with the focus in the uk that will then lead us to do a bit of analysis uh, versus mobile websites and mobile applications as well because that is so much talked about uh, topic across the industry and uh, there's so many debates going on uh, with the literature with the research across different universities in the UK but also in the industry and then I would just like to leave you with some takeaways and some things some of the um, ideas that you might take with you either if you want to improve your current mobile presence or if you are planning to build a strategy for your company and introduce uh, mobile services uh, in the near future okay now before before I get into it I just like I'm not gonna spend too much time in presenting you the figures and uh, how much uh, of a success mobile mobile commerce is really but I'm just gonna pick up in some of the data because I think that's that's quite important I think the first one to start with is really the 4G. I think the 4G is just going to change everything. It's changing everything now, simply because of the speed, right? And we're going to be looking at some of the weaknesses of the mobile commerce today, and that's going to be the connection, the loading time, and everything else. But this will just give us some ideas of how important is the launch of 4G network. The other thing is, of course, that more than 40% of increases just happening now uh, in uh, mobile shopping in 2012, last year. Now, we're having more and more people who are deciding to actually use their mobile phones to shop. Now, we'll be looking at some of the challenges that we're facing at the moment, okay? Then after that, the important thing as well is that because we're having these mobile phones with, with us wherever we go, I mean, I'm sure that so many times you probably forgot your wallet at home, you didn't care much about it, but then if you forget your phone, that's a big story, you've got to go back and pick that up, okay? And I think that's a very simple example, but just shows the power of that mobile device, okay? Now, the other thing that is happening with customers, because they're using so much and because there's so much content being provided over different mobile platforms, then we actually get into a stage where more than 60% of users are actually searching while watching TV using their mobile phone. Okay? Now, that used to be, uh, two years ago, it used to be between 45 and 50, but just last year went to 60. Now, that is quite an interesting figure because that just gives us an opportunity to think about where those customers, where those visits are going to. Okay, now if you've got a business that have got an online presence, 
okay, and you're selling, I don't know, travel guidance or travel services. However, your, your website has got no uh, mobile enabled features in there, then actually you're missing out. Now, we will look into some more details in, uh, shortly now, but something quite interesting as well is that click-through rates, which is another metric that is used in, in the mobile business, but also in e-commerce today, is pretty much just to show how many people are going to click through different ads, and in this case, through mobile ads, and that's growing immensely. Now, if you're on Facebook, how many of you are on Facebook? Wow. Everyone, that's brilliant. Have you noticed the um, Facebook mobile in ads? Now, as you uh, scroll down to see the updates on your timeline, you'll notice some apps, yeah? Uh, you, know, you notice some ads of different applications on your timeline. Maybe you haven't done so, but if you just scroll down in your phone, you'll start noticing different um, ads that Facebook is pre presenting in your timeline, okay? Now, what Facebook has done is actually that is um, helping them out to bring in some more revenue because they've been really struggling and they were not making money in their mobile phones. But now that's just changing everything. Now, what they've done, they have integrated the complete iTunes store into the Facebook. And it's quite amazing, really, when you look at it because you don't even have to go to leave the Facebook application and then to go into the iTunes to download that application is done from within Facebook, okay? And when the download is completed, you just uh, close your uh, your Facebook application, then go uh, in the home button in your iPhone, if you're using an iPhone, and then you will be able to open uh, that application up. And that is quite interesting, because that's why that, uh, that click-through rate is growing and growing. And the reason for that is also because now Facebook, more than ever, and other social networking sites just know so much about us. Who we are, how old are we, <laughs> things that we like, um, our educational background, our work experience, uh, our movie preferences, everything. Who we associating ourselves with, where we're spending most of our time. And there's one thing, one feature that has pretty much completed this whole journey and that is a location-based service. Now, every time you download an application on your phone today, you're probably just going to ignore that little pop-up window that says, do you want to allow this application to access your lo location? You just say, yes, it's OK, no problem, and then just move on. But that just gives a complete picture about your profile to the company. OK? Now, you might think that's a bit scary, right? But I, I don't think you should worry about that. Because what that really does is that it helps company to create a, a good full picture on your profile and who you are and things that you do. So then they serve you with better marketing content. Because they're going to serve you with marketing anyway. Because you know there is no such a thing as free. They're going to have to survive somehow. So they're going to have to start making some money. And it was about the time that you could go on YouTube and before you watch a really cool video you really like, you can have that 15 seconds video uh, ad. Yeah? Because they have to make that money somewhere. Okay? Now, the next thing is, of course, the customer expect to pretty much shop on the go all the time. So what is the challenge that businesses have at this moment is to really know, one and foremost, the most important thing if their mobile phone is actually uh, can be access friendly for you using using a mobile browser, okay? Now there are so many businesses that actually retail businesses as well that totally ignore this. And what they do, they actually go on their websites and spend so much money improving their e-commerce site, where in fact maybe 35% of their customers access their their uh, online retail using the mobile phone, okay? And I don't think we're going to have time to talk about analytics today, this evening, but uh, I'm going to try and talk about it a little bit because that's very important. Because analytics will help us assess how well we're doing online or offline or while we're connected with a mobile phone. And which are ignored most of the time by businesses. The other thing is, of course, 
the web is going mobile. Everything on the web today, we will have to, sooner or later that's going to be optimized so then you can access that via your mobile phone. And it's just a matter of time that everything that is served on the web has to be mobile accessible. Otherwise, there's no use. Just think about how much of your time in a day, in a week, in a month, in a year, your mobile phone is with you in your pocket. Okay? And just think about how much of reading, emails, games, Facebook, Twitter, social networking that you spend time with, even until you go to sleep. That's going to be the last thing you're going to put away from your bed. Okay? And all of that time that is spent is going to be very important when we look from a business perspective. And we see, well, how we can understand who our customers are and how we can serve them better, which are the features we need to have on our, on our mobile sites. And just a quick uh, figure as well, in 2013 we expect to get to 1 billion mobile uh, users worldwide. And that's quite staggering. And of course, just last year we had 24% of the mobile users in the UK that access e-commerce via mobile phone. 24%. That's a huge number. Now, when you think about all applications that are being built as we speak, that just means that everything is becoming so easy for us to shop. Okay? But, however, there's so many businesses that are missing out. And they don't really see uh, one of the most important things. They don't see opportunities on the mobile phone yet. Until they realize that their competitors is flying with, 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 with the success in sales, okay? Now, let's just look at some of the uh, other information which we already covered. However, an idea that just how much time is spent online doing all sorts of different things, starting from the search, social networking, and of course shopping is amazing, okay? But the most amount of time, the data shows, the most amount of time we spend using the, our mobile phone is for social networking purposes. That's Facebook, Twitter, LinkedIn, well, mostly Facebook, really. <laughs> now, it is quite important to, and th that, that's normally what I say to the students, actually, to have a bit of uh, planning and the amount of time you spend on Facebook before you're actually going to go and do something else. And try to understand experiment Facebook more rather than just di dive into that application and just end up playing games. Which you'll be surprised that not just students do that. <laughs> A lot of our members of Star Wars actually download applications sometimes. You send them a Facebook message quite late at night and they reply back <laughs> because they've been playing some uh, different games, yeah? Okay, now the other thing, I, I believe it's quite important to understand which are the versions of M-commerce you're going to see as you read articles, journals, publications and books. Uh, normally, what you will see is something like that. Sometimes, Ash hyphen commerce, M commerce, mobile e commerce, or mobile commerce. Okay? Now, let's just try and define this in a simply possible way. Well, a mobile commerce is a simple interaction in which a financial transaction is enabled using a mobile phone. Okay? Now, we can go and find so many other definitions which are a lot more complex than this one, but I think it's just important to realize that we're going to use that mobile device that is connected to a 3G network using an application or a website that is enabled for mobile to buy something. Okay, we already talked about some of the things we do with the mobile phone, but it's quite important just to keep that in mind. Well, the most popular apps in the world today are starting with Facebook, Twitter, search, Google, and then the shopping comes actually fifth or sixth. Okay? But the key ones and the most popular ones, services that we, we do while we're on the mobile phone are using um, some of these apps. Now, location apps are really important. Why? Because we use that to orientate ourselves where we drive or we go somewhere and it's actually quite quite good. Now the other thing that we do normally is actually we search using a mobile phone and then we go and buy the store. How many times you search either in online or e-commerce and you find the product you like and you're happy with the price but you're not going to buy? <laughs> That's when companies realized they had to do something about it. So they launched Click and Collect. 
And every business that launched Click and Collect, which is not an expensive feature, benefited so much from it and made our life easy too. Because some people just don't like to share their credit card. It's fine, it's understandable. But that doesn't mean that you should not be running an e-commerce site because you must ask for credit card details, because you don't have to. There was an example, I forgot the name of an e-commerce site in India, where uh, they had some problems in receiving, uh, receiving online payments in a secure way, and also their target audience didn't have credit cards. Okay, and then it took them some time until they've done some research. They said, okay, no problem. You shop online, we'll bring you, we'll bring you the product, and as you collect that, you'll just pay for it. And just think how simple is that? And just few companies that do that. And that's why we still have s such a low conversion rate across the industry, which is between 3 to, uh, to 5%. And Amazon does 4%, which means out of 100 people, only 3 to 4 actually buy. So from the business perspective, we're missing big time. So more than 95 people are not going to do anything. They're just going to come. They're going to be cops to you because they're going to be using your website and your website is run by service and then you have to pay for that service uh, for the, from whether you're using Amazon or some other uh, companies. Okay? Now, of course, games are, are hugely uh, popular on mobile phones, are being downloaded so much. We use it for chat quite a lot. But something that's quite interesting that has been enabled using lo uh, lo uh, lo uh, location-based services are actually uh, discounts and points that we get if we start using some of these applications. Now, the most popular one is Foursquare. Anyone using Foursquare? Now, what the Foursquare is, is an application that allows you to check in wherever you are. Okay? Now, every time you check in in a different place, they start giving you some points. Yeah? And then, as soon as you get to a certain amount of points, you become a mayor of that place. Yeah? Okay? And then what happens? The businesses start to understand and see who are the most uh, regular visitors that come to that, to, to, their, to their restaurant or to their cinema or whatever, and they start giving them discounts and, uh, and other uh, freebies. Okay. Now, another thing that happens quite a lot is actually comparing products and services. Okay? Now, we do that online on the web all the time using our desktop machines. Okay, but now we're doing that on a mobile phone as well. However, in a mobile phone, it's slightly more difficult. Why? Because of that screen size. Very small, right? Okay, if you're going to go for that Samsung uh, Galaxy S3, whatever it is, yeah, you will you will be able to have a better experience as you do that, but still quite hard. Now, that's why mobile applications are changing everything. And we're going to talk about mobile apps in, in a minute. But they're just making it everything so easy for us. Because while you're on the desktop, it's totally different experience from when you're on the mobile phone. And that could be speed, that could be uh, graphical user interface, all sorts of things. Things that work very well on the web don't work at all on a mobile phone. And that's why companies just, just has lost the touch. They think that what you can do on that website that they have already built, all they have to do is just reduce the images, the size of the images, size of the font, and then that's it. And then just bring that into the mobile phone and it's all fantastic. And we all know that doesn't work. It's not like that. You have to have a mobile presence. You have to design a, a, a website that actually is enabled and can respond well with that screen in a mobile phone. Okay? Now, if you were interested to know about demographics and who's spending more time and more money <laughs> in um, shopping using uh, smartphones, surprisingly, actually, it's us as now who does most of the shopping using a mobile phone. And I thought it would be the other way around, but it's not. And as you can see, um, the age range between 25 and 34 are the group of uh, young guys who actually spend most of the time shopping online. Okay, and if you want some more details, then you'll you'll be able to see for uh, female as well on the amount of uh, well uh, time and the money that we spent online, and that comes from uh, e-digital research income score. Okay, but 
I promised I won't be getting into details because the details are very positive and actually show that the success of e-commerce. Now, most influential promotions, for, well, for me, it could definitely be apple pie because I love apple pie, but for other people, it's not apple pie, it's really something else. Now, some of the things that really get your customers to come and use some of these applications are percent off, okay, uh, free shipping, Again, this one works very well on e-commerce on the web as well. We use that because the last thing we want to do is pay uh, for pay for shipping 15 quid for a product that costs 10 quid. That's the last thing you want to do. And there is something else that is missing out when it comes to um, providing a good mobile user experience. Is the fact that for the mobile application to be successful for your business that needs to be connected to other services okay now I can get a good example of that uh, I can think about at the moment first capital connect application or like the train line application that I think most of you have got installed in your phones right now if you wanted to buy a ticket because you want a travel car to go to London that's brilliant you check the live departures as well then you can buy the ticket but they'll charge you 150 to make that purchase. All right? Now, okay, you'll say, well, that's, it. it's okay, I'll, I'll go for it, I'm gonna buy it, right? But then even if you pay that pound 50 extra, you still have to go to the train station and need to collect that paper. That means that that service, to me, is, is incomplete. Because I spent one pound and 50 more and I still have to go and queue up because I need to collect that, that travel card. Okay? So those services, those mobile services, whenever they're built, actually you need to have a broader picture how these connect with each other. So it needs to be a good journey of the customer service that connects things together to have a successful uh, overall mobile experience. Now going back to what attracts most the customers, of course, money off, buy one, get one free, that works in everyday life and also is working quite well in the mobile. Gift purchase and reward points. These are, this is what the research shows, the most um, successful influential promotional uh, uh, elements that are used, okay? Now, let's le see some of the key features on in mobile shopping. Okay, that actually we use it, we use them all the time and bringing a lot of traffic. Now, some of the key features are recommendations. Okay, every application, every mobile application that is well built, it will give you an opportunity to recommend that product or that application to somebody else. Okay, the other thing is, of course, browse products. Okay, where you will be able in that small screen to go and try and browse some products of your interest. However, you all know how many companies are trying to build some sort of website for mobile phones which you, you have all those pop-up windows and you can't really find the place where you can close them, the, the, the X thing, okay? And you find so impossible to be able to find, to, uh, find yourself around that service. Sending gifts, uh, same day delivery, uh, discount codes, deals, reviews, reminders, location-based services, okay? These are some of the most popular features. Of course, another one that sometimes is ignored by most businesses is store locator. Now that is essential. Imagine all that 95% of people who don't buy online, okay? And if they knew where they could find your local uh, store, they would go and probably purchase. But if you haven't provided that facility on your mobile application, then you're missing out. And then you wonder why those sales are just not going up. Okay? And very small things make a big difference when it comes to this whole customer journey on a mobile phone. Uh, the other thing is product reviews. Now, that's quite interesting because how many of you are on the iPhone? How many of you are using iPhones? Now, when you go or in the Play Store from Google Android, how many of you are Android users? Now, every time you go and search for an application you want to install, what is the first thing you're going to look into? Reviews. Sorry? Reviews. Yeah, reviews. 
the first thing you're going to do is, before you do anything else, even before you read what the application is about, you're going to try and see how many re reviews that application has got. So reviews now are part of pretty much every application on, um, on a mobile phone. Because you really want to show to all your customers that that product has got high reviews, and of course, you can go ahead and buy it. Okay? And there was also some research done uh, last year from Harvard University where two PhD students created an MP3 song and they uploaded an mp3.com, which is like a popular uh, music player online. And then they got like more than a thousand students just to download, download, and rate as high as they could. Okay? And th it, that wasn't any good song at all. But by the end of the day, it got in the top three on the top list with like big bands and big, uh, you know, um, well-known bands, okay? So what they concluded with that research is that more downloaded apps, actually more downloaded MP3 songs actually get more downloaded. How many times you've downloaded an application on your phone and you delete it after two, well, after 10 seconds? Mostly like free applications or something like that. Because when you buy, you actually read very carefully what does that application provide to you and everything, and then you say, okay, well, I'll buy it now. But free applications, you just see some very good reviews, yeah, I might need this one sometime later, but not now, but maybe sometime later. And you'll download that, and as soon as you open that up, and you start browsing through, looking at the features, you just say, no, not for me. Okay? So it's quite important to, to keep that in mind whenever you think about some of the key features on mobile phones. What are the challenges? Well, there are so many of them, but I've, I thought I'd share some with you. Some of the key challenges we talked about a little bit is the conversion rate. So what is the conversion rate? The conversion rate is pretty much the amount of visitors that turn into customers. Okay, and we talked about the conversion rate online is from three to 5%. And we only have Amazon who does 4%. And Amazon, they do brilliant. <laughs> And they're, they're, they're an example for every business, okay? Because Amazon doesn't redesign their store ever. Because they do it every second. Amazon will keep uh, analyzing every feature of their site and they're testing with different groups of customers to get the right one. That's why they provide the best customer experience you can think of, okay? Now, conversion rate in the mobile phone is just above 3%. So it's quite still low. Okay, and that's my research interest is as well. Because I really want to try and find out what are those elements in that customer journey that can be improved to improve this conversion rate. So it's like industry-wide problem and challenge, okay? However, there's so much being published, but hasn't, nothing has come out yet to give clues on the elements of customer journeys that we can improve to get this conversion rate high. Now, of course, we're gonna have the same problem with mobile phones as well. And we've been with e-commerce uh, for, for a while now, and we still have so many companies who just can't get that right. And the reason for that, without getting into detail, is because companies do not know who they're serving. Most companies online, actually, they, have, they think they know who they serve, but they don't. Because they do not spend enough time to understand who their typical visitors are, where they come from, which channels are they coming from. Now, somebody that comes from Facebook is totally different from somebody that comes from LinkedIn. From LinkedIn, you're gonna have more professional business people. From web, you can also have some professional business people from Facebook, but mostly you're gonna have slightly different groups of people, yeah? So understanding who those typical visitors are in your site is essential because then you will replicate that into the design of your, of your website. So that is what's mostly missing into, into e-commerce sites across the industry. <coughs> now, if you wonder why do customers, why they don't buy? What is the key thing, that, the key reason why they don't buy? Well, the research shows and all the commercial projects we do a regular at the business school actually sh show that the main reason is, of course, the un un optimized uh, mobile presence. So, 
what happens is that, as I said to you, companies think that they've got a good presence on on uh, on mobile platforms by reducing the image, the font, the the page, doing a bit of uh, HTML changes in there, a bit of tags, and a bit of optimization, and thinking that it's all going to work out well, which it won't. Now the next thing is, of course, connection speed. Now. Thanks God we've got 4G now, and I, I just hope that it's going to roll out all across Europe as soon as possible because that's going to change quite a lot, okay? Because it's going to make those services to come speedy to us, and that's what we want. Because we live dynamic lives and we just don't have time to wait, okay? And we're going to look at some research that uh, has been done by uh, uh, Camcord that just shows how that is reflecting. The other thing is, of course, what we do sometimes as a business is we send our users to non-mobile websites. Okay, we when when we have our users coming to our main website, we say, okay, well, why don't you go to our mobile site when that mobile site is not optimized at all? You just have a link to send them somewhere that is not in incomplete. Okay, the other thing is, of course, no checkout options, reserve cash and delivery, and click and collect. Now, with the mobile phone, you have a total different mindset on using that device. The last thing you want is to go and input like three stage, four stage process, your name, surname, address, where do you live, credit card details. I mean, sometimes you find that difficult on a PC. Mm -hmm. Okay? But companies ask you to do the same thing on a mobile phone. You're going to purchase from that company? I want. Okay? Now, that's why that model needs to change. And that's why PayPal is doing very good with that. Because what PayPal is doing now, PayPal is allowing you simply to let you sign in using your username and password and buy. And that is very simple. Why on earth would you need to go and provide credit card details again and the address and all this information in in that little screen just because the company couldn't bother to synchronize those information that, that they collected from you in their previous visit and serve that to you next time you come along. Okay? Now, the other thing is, of course, uh, the idea that pr on privacy and security. Now, this is a big issue. Security is just going to change everything now because Companies are just thinking that as long as you build something that is, it looks nice, it's a good design, has got a good customer journey, everything else will be fine. Well, that's not true. Because what you're offering to your customers, you're offering them products and services where they need to share some personal information with you. And unless they're fully comfortable with it, they're not going to do it. Now, how many times you were searching something online for a product or service, you decided to buy, and then you went through a checkout process, and when you said, pay for this because I decided, the page goes blank. Okay? And the next thing you're going to do, you're going to refresh it. Now, oops, are you going to pay twice for the same product? Well, sometimes it happens. Sometimes you pay twice. So the next thing you've got to do is call the company and say, please cancel one because I just need one. I don't need two. Okay? Now, that same reason of creating a stable but also a uh, encrypted personal journey while giving uh, personal information absolutely essential. Because that's, what, that's the time, that's the most vulnerable time when somebody tries to get in in between that communication between the user, that server sitting somewhere in, uh, in, uh, across the country, and then get that data, okay? So that, that encryption of the data and the services provided by different companies is absolutely essential. Now that's not cheap, that comes with a price. That's why some companies unfortunately ignore that as they build mobile applications, ignore that pricing service that they should use to be able to encrypt that communication between different devices. The other thing, of course, no store locators provided. Now, we, we do know that not all the time we want to buy. So sometimes we just want to know where is our closest, nearest store. So you, if you did a bit of research, I've done recently, and you'll be amazed that you will find so many applications, mobile businesses, that actually do not provide this. 
And that's not an expensive feature to have on a mobile phone, on their application, either on their website. Well, you can do another research where you can just go and check e-commerce website across the country and realize that even you know, uh, regular websites from your desktop PC, they won't provide this to you. Okay, and these are just some of the small features, but that's the biggest challenge at the moment. Now, pop-up windows, we talked about this. Those are the most annoying things on a PC, but think about them on a mobile. Think about them on pop-up windows on that small screen. Okay, maybe on the tablets, you can actually find a way to close them down. But how easy is that on a mobile phone? So if we're made to tap more than three times, we're just going to close that application. We're not going to use it any longer. OK? The other thing, of course, poor customer journey. Now, I'm not going to get into customer journey this evening, uh, but customer journey, absolutely essential. Is that process from the time that somebody has landed into your application to the time that they checked out? So that's the customer journey. OK? Now, Customer journey on an e-commerce, traditional e-commerce site, is very different from customer journey in a mobile applications. But there seems to be companies that think that that's the same process, and therefore they don't cut barriers between uh, between uh, the e-commerce site on the traditional uh, websites to that on a mobile uh, services. Okay. Now, that is something that companies normally just ignore and do not spend enough time to understand what that journey that typical customers go through. And then try and cut as much as possible all those barriers so then they can provide a better customer journey in general. Okay, something that of course fits in all this is normal pre-testing, uh, flat pre-testing that are done every time an application is built. Okay, now the reason why companies don't do that in most of the time is because it's quite expensive. Because you need to have people, you need to have users. Normally, you need to have different users from different age groups, so you really know what is their experience with your application. And only then, you should be able to go live with, with that service. But you will be surprised that so many companies that either do e-commerce online or provide mobile services actually don't do that okay because sometimes that could um, raise the overall budget for uh, building that application between 15 to 20 percent because you need people you need somebody to look after of observe those those uh, customers and what do they think do they have any comments and the things that can be improved so that is another problem so that all of this most of this actually fits within that process Let's look up, uh, at the details, more specific details about the reason why people just abandon and leave your mobile applications. Well, on a normal website, you will not, research shows that you will not wait more than three seconds. If you've got to wait more than three seconds, you're going to close, go to Google, and find their next competitor. Okay? On the mobile phone, surprisingly, I was surprised, research shows that you wait till five seconds. I don't think I've ever waited in five seconds. Maybe I did if I had no other choice, but most of the time I would try and find another way to get quicker to, to that information, okay? But the research shows that around 5% or, or, until five seconds we will wait uh, until we, we've uh, received something from that tap, that click on the mobile phone. Now, you see, this is a very small element. But just imagine how many customers leave that application without any, doing anything with it, without engaging with your brand, engaging with your services and products, just because you made them wait. You spend so much time, you spend 50K, 100K on companies. I mean, some of the projects I've been involved in the last two years, like projects with Paul Smith, Virgin Brands, I mean, the amount that I spend in e-commerce is like 200,000 pounds. Because those websites turn million a thousand pounds turnover every year. Okay, but then we don't do one thing very well, do a bit of testing and understanding how much are we making those customers wait. Because that just changes everything. And that's the first entry, that's the time somebody is coming into the site, doing some clicks and trying to find a product and you get them to wait 
and of course you lose them. Now, what are the mobile trends and features that we need to be thinking about? Well, we talked about some of these things, but I think that location-based services are just absolutely essential, okay? Because, as I said here, the location-based service are completing the picture that businesses need to know about their customers, okay? And as I said to you earlier, sometimes that might sound scary to you, but in most cases, you should, you, should, you should be fine because companies actually collect this data to offer you better uh, marketing uh, services. Uh, now, of course, the other thing is social networking. Now, mobile has helped social networking in being used even more, which means that's why just two weeks ago, you had um, Zuckerberg smiling big time because their revenues from us increased by 25%. And that is because they introduced mobile in advertising that I talked to you about earlier. Now, if you've got your mobile phone, you can do it now, you can do it later on. But if you open your Facebook application, just scroll down in the timeline, you will be able to see some applications that are presented to you and those are ads that Facebook is showing on to you, okay? And apparently that is where Facebook and Mark sees the biggest success with Facebook. Okay, especially in the mobile phone. And that's why in the last conference he said, mobile is everything for us. We've got to do everything to get that point. And I think with mobile and advertising is doing quite well at the moment. Now, mobile e-commerce, of course, it's it's something that we can't we can't ignore. We need to be thinking about the ways that we can develop mobile e-commerce websites. Mobile payment, now we talked about the challenge with mobile payment. The last thing you want is to get your, your customer to input data about uh, their, their, their address, credit card details and everything in that little screen, okay? So we need to avoid, of trying to avoid these barriers, okay? And make it as simple as possible. Always having in mind that somebody has got a mobile phone, maybe he's got a very bad 3G connection, then by the time he's inputted all the details, the mobile phone has lost the connection with the cellular network. Okay? Which meant that after two, three minutes of, hit of uh, the user inputting information, they lost everything. Now, the mobile instant messages, that is super popular nowadays. How many of you got WhatsApp application? <laughs> okay. What in WhatsApp application is, is pretty much um, an SMS uh, messaging service for free where you can uh, send media messages, uh, voice, audio recording, video, um, and also send messages uh, like uh, other different types of you know, uh, messages in, in that. So if you haven't tried, you can try it, but it's the most popular application on the mobile phone today, which means that actually we're using less native applications on our phone, specifically on iPhone, and using more WhatsApp application because it's just free and we're all connected to the internet anyway. So it doesn't matter where I'm sending my new message in uh, France or Italy, I'm not gonna pay anything extra. I'm just gonna pay uh, for that WhatsApp application, which in Android is for free, and in iPhone it's uh, it's commercial, so you have to pay for it. But I think the price I forgot it was probably 99p or 69p or something like that. Yeah, so it's quite cheap. So pretty much you're bypassing the native SMS application at the moment. Okay, and you know that if you use that service for other countries apart from UK you're going to have to pay quite quite a big price for that because I think the cost of SMS is around 30, 40 P or something like that, sending it outside. Now, email, video sharing, of course, those are productive applications that are enabled using a mobile today. So uh, it, it's quite interesting if you do a bit of analysis of your customer journey on a mobile phone and just to think about how much of the work you actually do on that little screen. And I respond to so many of my emails using mobile phone, okay? And of course, emails that do require a lot, lot more work, like reporting or documents or things like that, then yes, I'll leave those for later. But everything that doesn't require uh, any, any amount of big work or changing files, I'm just gonna do that. In fact, now, 
because there are more applications that we can download on our mobile phones or tablets, we're able to edit those documents, save them, and then attach them to an email, same way we do on our PC. Okay? And that's why that is becoming even more popular, of course, without forgetting the uh, multimedia and YouTube that is being so popular on, uh, on the mobile phones as well. And please keep in mind that YouTube is pretty much the second biggest search engine in the, in the world today. And that's why Google didn't hesitate to give seven, seven billion for that in uh, 2007. Now, mobile gaming, we talked about it, is super popular, and of course, it's something that is gonna keep growing. And the reason for that is because now we have more powerful um, um, processors installed in, in every mobile phone, which means it allows us to, to, to have better rendering on animation and things like that. So that is just changing quite a lot. Now, of course, we talked about it. We've got dual and core, core dual uh, processors installed into new um, mobile phones now. Pretty much just making it so much better, so much faster, everything, everything we do. From the gaming to like uh, using social networking applications or to using other uh, applications or tools that we want to assess our online business. Now, we talked about location, but location is, we are coming back to it because it's really, really important to keep in mind. Now, the reason for that is because every ad that is served in a mobile platform, and as mentioned the location, that ad is so popular. In fact, the research shows that it's around 200% of, of the click-through rate if an application has got a uh, location input it into that ad, okay? And that's huge. So that's a click-through rate in a mobile phone uh, without, without a location, and that's a click-through rate in a mobile phone with a location uh, in that. Now, I haven't had an example, but as you use your mobile phone, you can pick these up. Now, location-based technology and store retailers go together like coffee and milk for me. Okay, and because you can't separate them. That's why so many retailers are missing out big time. Because they just do not have those, this feature uh, uh, enabled in their mobile phones, in their mobile applications. Okay, now it was just recently that big retailers are actually starting to enable local based features in, in, their, in their applications. Of course, being led by ASUS. ASUS is the biggest a uh, fashion retailer online if you've never heard of but because they don't have a physical store they're doing everything they can to provide a best customer journey on their uh, e-commerce sites but also on the mobile website as well and on their application but that is that is something that normally most of the businesses actually miss out we talked a little bit about connecting services now this is something that big companies are doing everything they can to be able to provide you with better experience using their services. Now, as you shop something on your PC, the next thing you want to do is that you want to check on the order. When you can expect to receive it, everything else. You can maybe start reading more about the product or look at some reviews or watch some videos on that mobile phone. The next thing, so that's a pretty much a journey that uh, a mobile user gets involved after they've done some shopping online on a, on, a, on a standard website, okay? Now, as you can see, that's a complete journey that different applications make it possible for us, okay? But we all want to know what happens from the beginning that we order something online to the time that we have actually received it, okay? Now, that's why synchronizing these services is absolutely the key. Synchronizing these touch points of a customer throughout this process is absolutely essential. Now, if you want to know about an example, then iCloud is probably the best example. All of you that are using uh, iPhones at the moment, now you will be able to do, to uh, pretty much keep an eye on the things that you're doing from your Mac, the things that you're doing on your our iPad and the things that you're doing on your iPhone. So we have a consistency on all the services. So uh, now, 
from your iPhone, you can actually go in your iPhone and see all the uh, all the browser applications that you've had open on your Mac. Okay, and you can do the same thing using your Mac and check out on the applications that you've used on your on your iPhone as well. Now, connecting these services is absolutely the key. Now. Why that is important is because we need to know what's happening with that customers of ours no matter which device they're on. Whether they're on a tablet, on a mobile, or on a standard, standard website, we need to know what's happening. And we need to connect these dots together so we start offering them be better services, we start offering them support, but also we start giving them opportunities to actually save their products in the wish list. So if you save the product in the wish list on the standard website, you need to be able to go on your mobile phone and be able to see what are the products you have looked on your on that traditional website. And this way, if you spend as a business, if you spend time in connecting services together, then you won't be losing as much customers as you think you would. Because at that time, a customer starts uh, browsing your e-commerce site online and then uh, saving some of the products. At the moment, they move into a mobile platform. They they'll be able to continue whatever they were doing online. And whatever they were doing, they end up doing on the mobile phone. You want them to be able to pick up on the standard website. So these connected services are changing everything now because it's making it easier for us. Otherwise, you'll have to start from scratch every time you change a, change a platform, every time you change a device. There is no surprise why Google offers you all the time an opportunity to sign in in, um, in Gmail or sign in in any of their services on Google Plus when you start searching uh, in Google in a new device. If you remember when you first activated your iPhone or your Android phone, the first Google services like a search, it offered you an opportunity to sign in using your Gmail. Why? Because they need to know, they need to learn who you are. So then they can serve you with better services. Now Google Plus, if you haven't used, Google Plus is a hub to Google services. Okay? And that's why Google wants in that ecosystem to get you connected and hooked up to different services, but they also want to know more about you so they can offer you other new services. And the last thing they want is you to go and move into Apple services, okay, on, and on the iOS phone. And that's what companies are doing across the world now. You've got Amazon, why did they launch Tablet? Because they got so much content. They're not worried too much how, much of, uh, how many tablets they're gonna sell, they were to send the content because they got so much. All right, so that is connect. That's another example of connecting services together. Okay, and of course now you've got Amazon Store for books, games, and everything else. Now, before we move on, I believe it's quite important to uh, think about to do just a bit of analysis the difference between mobile site versus a mobile application. Okay, now this is a huge debate, so there's no black and white uh, discussion that we can have in here, but normally mobile sites, actually depending on how big your e-commerce site is, can be quite expensive too, if you're doing it properly. If you're gonna go and develop and design uh, a website from scratch, for the mobile phone is actually quite expensive, okay? But on the other hand, applications are actually quite expensive too, depending on how on the features you want to have in there. Okay? However, lots of companies nowadays are actually doing both. Is it more expensive for them? But they're doing both because they don't want to miss out. They're having their mobile website built up for their business, but also having their mobile application. Okay? Because if you're building an application for your business for uh, iPhone, of course, the Android users, which are more than 40% of them, are not gonna have access to it. So you're missing out. It's a huge uh, bunch of customers out there, okay? Now, the, uh, if you go with the solution, actually building up a mobile website only, then you're not missing out, because it, depending on the platform 
uh, from the platform that users are coming from, you allowing them to buy, whether you're coming from Android or iOS. Now, companies that do not have big budgets, they're going to go for the mobile side. They, they're not going to bother in building an iPhone application. Now, mobile side, just to look at it quickly, appears inside the browser. So as soon as you go into your browser, into your mobile phone, you say apple.com, it's probably going to redirect you immediately to their mobile website. Okay? Now, the other thing is, of course, you can access it 99% of the time. You don't have to download anything, and it's automatically enabled for all the devices. Um, the other thing is that most of the time, the websites that are well built in a mob for a mobile device actually automatically redirecting you to their mobile checkout process as well, which is should be slightly simplified. The, the other thing is the mobile app. Of course, the native application you download that you install in your phone. The beauty of the mobile apps is because they work faster. They're more reliable. You can do a lot more with them. Okay, and the, whether you're losing a connection or not, that's not going to change much because as soon as your application gets connected to a cellular network, it's going to update your process. So you won't be missing out too much, specifically if you were about to check out and buy something. Whereas in the mobile side, you might, uh, once you lose the connection you might, and refresh your browser, you might end up actually paying twice for that same service or the same problem. Okay? Example of the more applications, the most popular ones are the barcode and picture scanning. But of course, apps are the ones that um, we need to uh, keep keep in mind when, when, whenever we want to decide to develop a mobile strategy, simply because this will help us provide a better experience for our customers. Because as soon as you move from a mobile website and you download the application and start using and, and installing the application using on your mobile phone, it changes everything. Whether that's an Amazon, whether that's an eBay, whether that's an Apple, whatever, whatever company it is, a mobile application most of the time is better experience and it's faster, it loads up faster, actually uh, it's much more um, friendly user interface as well. Now, before I get to the end, I'd like to talk to you about some of the things that you can take away uh, and at the same time think about whenever you're uh, planning to build a new mobile presence or either improve a current one. Okay, the first things first, if you've got big budgets, you shouldn't worry about this because you can just get your teams of people to build your mobile website or build a mobile application for you. However, if you have limited budgets, by the way, I don't do any sales for these guys, so <laughs> I'm just showing them because they're uh, quite quite uh, affordable services you could use if you ever wanted to build up a uh, uh, website, mobile website. Okay. Now, that's these two services that are quite widely used around the industry, uh, Duda Mobile and Mo Mobify, that allow you in very simple steps without the need to go and learn how to code for your mobile phone to build up a uh, mobile website for your businesses. Now, that is quite important because even if you can't get this perfectly right, at least you're providing something for your customers. Okay? And they know that you're putting some focus into that. Now, these are some of the most popular services. They're like um, quite widely used across the industry. Now, things that I'd like you to take away. Um, Mobile is easier and harder than it looks like. Actually, there are so many things that you need to be thinking about whenever you start building up or improving an online uh, mobile application, okay? Now, we talked about customer journey. That's when the role of customer journey comes in, okay? Optimization requires effort, okay? And it's, it doesn't come cheap. You need to make sure that part of that specification plan to build or improve a mobile application, the optimi optimization is part of that process. Now, apps should be built with customer journey in mind. Okay, That's why you need to fully understand who your typical customers are before you actually start building your application. Because when you do that, you replicate the needs of customers into that application. Because what a 20 years old needs is completely different from maybe from what I need. 
Okay, now that is quite important to replicate those needs into the design and the user interface because we have different, different interests as well. Mobile and social go together. So you can't disconnect them. And that's why whenever you uh, start building uh, a mobile presence for your business, you need to make sure that your social networking presence are linked with your mobile website or your mobile application. Which means that if some customers want to engage with you in social networking sites, they need to be able to do that from within your uh, mobile application or your mobile website, okay? So they, they need to be connected. Assessment of the mobile presence is the key. Uh, whether you've got some presence or not, you need to be able to go out and see what are your competitors are doing and doing some analysis. And then with the help of some insights you'll get from customers, you start to build up a bigger picture of what you need to do next. Be prepared to match functionality with business needs. Of course, this is another very important thing, but sometimes ignored by businesses where they don't think too much. They think more about making something cool, nice uh, for their, for their uh, mobile application, but actually don't necessarily uh, represent uh, the needs that their business has and the services they want to provide. And of course, you need as a business to be able to, uh, to give recommendations as well. Not just wait for your digital agency that you're paying so much for to actually come to you and say, oh, by the way, we've got a new service that we can introduce into your web application today, and that will cost another 25K. Okay, so you need to start continuously engage with, with your mobile presence, so you start making recommendations yourself, and maybe get some of your team to do slight changes as well. Be prepared to match, of course, we talked about that, but of course, the other thing that is quite important is mobile is the present and future of social and business. Now, you can't escape from this one, whether you like it or you don't, we, we're going through it. We're on it now. Now, sometimes ago, when we started talking about social networking, everybody said, no, Facebook, forget about it. Okay? Twitter, no way. Twitter's never going to do anything. You know, why, why are you using it? And now you've got, obviously, a billion users on Facebook, and these giants making billions of pounds. Okay? Well, people are using them, and because they got so huge amount of information about us and the things that we do, they've got power. So, of course, they're going to do everything to provide services so then we will stick to Facebook and we're not going to go somewhere else. Why you've got uh, Facebook APIs now where other companies can build for Facebook is because that's exactly what Facebook wants. Facebook wants gaming game industry to come into Facebook and build as much as possible for Facebook. Why? Because we stick to Facebook application all the time. Now, how many times are you receiving invites for the bird dates, uh, for the poker games, casinos, all sorts of other things, invitation on Facebook, you say, I don't want any of that. But why that happens is because you've got your friends who are just going to download those uh, applications, install them on Facebook without even looking for, just say next, 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 and then agree somewhere in between to send to all their friends an invitation. Okay? Of course, Facebook won't make that very obvious because that's exactly what they want you to do. And that's what used to happen with High Five and some other social networking sites, where they got you to sign in using your Hotmail or Yahoo address. Why they did that? Because the next thing they've done after you sign in with your Hotmail address, they have spammed everyone on your behalf. And that's, where, that's how some of those social networking sites were taking off so fast. Because they were just spamming everyone, and uh, whether you wanted or you, or you didn't, you did receive an, uh, an invitation for that. So that's quite important to, to uh, keep in mind. But of course, the other thing is as well, is to try and understand how you can represent your services into these platforms, whether that's a social networking or a mobile. Okay? Now, there's no... Mobile is not a cool thing anymore. Social networking is not a cool thing anymore. It's a must. We've got to be there. Because our customers are there. Depending on the group of customers you're serving, they're going to be either on Facebook or on LinkedIn or on Google+. They're going to be in one of those places. And because they are there, they expect businesses 
to serve on those social networking platforms. Okay? And this, that's the same thing goes for mobile. Because our customers are actually using everyday mobile phones, whether that's for emails, gaming, social networking, they expect businesses to be there. Now, if they are true loyal customers of ours, they probably stick around for a while until you're going to have your competitor offering that bang on. You lost. And before you realize, X company, Y company, bankrupt. Simply because they, kept, they didn't keep up with what was happening. And we, ha we hear those stories all the time, but business, mobile, mobile social networking, it's gonna affect them even more and quicker than we think. Okay? And it's quite important to um, uh, consider that all the time. Now, the other thing is, of course, mobile payment. Now, uh, near field communication is a new uh, service now provided by most, uh, well, most new devices will have a little chip inside the hardware that allows us to, to uh, pay using our mobile phone and an additional application installed on our mobile phone for products and services, okay? Now, what an NFC is, putting it simply, is just a two-way communication that allows our, our mobile phone to communicate with another service and exchange some information. In that case, we exchange uh, credit card details, okay? Now, that is quite important because also because there are so many big players from sorry from Google, Apple, and Amazon as well, MasterCard, PayPal, doing everything they can to try and introduce their services so then we will be hooked up with those services and then that's it, we won't we will stick to that for a while until we let that down. Now I um that's pretty much all I wanted to talk to you about today. If you have any question, please feel free to, to ask. If you want to be in touch with me, I'm on Twitter, Facebook, LinkedIn, pretty much everywhere. But uh, if you uh, want to connect with me on Twitter, then at Hira, that's my Twitter username. Thank you very much. Please do ask questions. Products that people are buying are changing because of things. I mean, there's things in your know, um, own. If you want scaffolding poles or RCJs, RCJs, and building materials, you still got to go to building material shop. Yeah. The products. And the prices are pretty much the same. So, an optimized mobile e commerce website isn't really going to help. I mean, Juicers has a site, and that's usually the DIY enthusiasts, the builders, still go to the suppliers. I agree with you. However, I think it is, it, it will be useful, it will help you out. And there is one thing that the, uh, your mobile presence can help you, is the fact that you're going to inform your, your um, leads, your cu potential customers, before they come on to you. You're pretty much, you're educating them, you're telling them, you're informing them, even though your mobile uh, website or your mobile application doesn't do any selling because you're selling these big, huge products that they need to come visit and see and everything else and talk to you. However, you're actually using your mobile presence first to get as much visitors and traffic as you can, so you qualify leads using your mobile presence. And that's the way you should be part of your strategy in the business. Say, because conversion rate is not all the time selling. And I didn't cover this one. Conversion rate sometimes is because you might want to get people to subscribe to your newsletters you're offering, or like to the guidelines and using your products, okay? Or to sign up for new deals or like upcoming products. So, or to download videos, to download guidelines, eBooks, other content. So it's not necessarily selling. It's not necessarily like uh, uh, a transaction uh, that is made online, okay? And that's, that's my view on it. And I think you need to try and, and find ways how you can attract more visitors to your, to your company using these channels. Yes. 
taking the question as example, I've found that firms like Screwfix are excellent for click and collect. So even for quite large building materials, I'd do that online and then go and collect. Yeah. Absolutely. And then what, what also happened is that as soon as you get to the company, if you're not happy with that product, they're there, they're going to change it for you. So even though you agreed to click and collect, that can be changed. And that's why click and collect has just changed everything when it comes to e-commerce. Yes, please. Um, I noticed when you had your slide up showing demographics, male and female, and yeah. age ranges, um, 13 to 17 were one group. And then 55 plus was one group by itself. Is there a danger of concentration on things like social networking sites and so on? Missing out on people who maybe are retired, who are less likely on social networking, but who have plenty of money and might be encouraged in if uh, M commerce were optimized for them as much as for the younger audience? Yes, there is, there is a danger. Uh, that's why I think that businesses need to leverage every possible opportunity, every possible channel they've got. Now, uh, when we talk about social network networking, we should never say, well, let's just leave everything and just invest all our time into social networking and improving that presence, okay? Because that's not the only thing we should do. The first thing is that we, of course, need to make sure that we have our mobile website is well optimized because you're going to have a huge amount of people who are never ever going to come to your Facebook fan page because they don't care. All they want to do is to buy something. I mean, I sometimes end up having long chats with my mom and I say, oh, you could do this, you could do that, blah, 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 blah. And then she says, I don't care about any of that. I just want to buy, full stop. Just make that process easy for me. Okay? And that's what sometimes companies still take that for granted and kind of forget. Who's next? Yes. Uh, you mentioned uh, conversion rates of three, typically 3%. How does that compare with conventional shops? Uh, with the conventional shopping, I the answer is I don't know exactly how how, but I think it's between fifteen and eighty percent to the recent research that I've read around <coughs> conventional shopping. Now, um, I think that e-commerce is is actually helping companies sell offline more too. It's almost like. Uh, information-based uh, website as well, even though they're not necessarily selling online, actually getting people to buy offline. An example is click and collect, but there is also more. There are lots of people that just go on your website, you have an e-commerce site, but you're actually not selling much. However, face-to-face, -face, on the store, you're actually selling, selling quite a lot. And that sometimes could be a reason why you informing well your customers on your website, they're all very happy, but they're not going to buy it, but they're coming in the store. So uh, there isn't enough research done in this area, but uh, something that has been published so far it actually shows that even if a company doesn't sell much on the e-commerce site uh, per se, it actually sells quite a lot offline. And they do no other marketing whatsoever. So that clearly information comes from their e-commerce site.